What's up everybody, how's it going? Just want to do a quick introduction here. Basically, in this video, I wanted to share with you the story of how I went from quite literally never having written a line of code in my life to landing a job as a software engineer at Google in just a little over six months. And as you'll see, in this video, I really tried to be candid and transparent because I want to give you sort of accurate information. I want to paint a real picture of what happened uh, without leaving out important details, but at the same time without sort of adding a bunch of useless information. And hopefully this video will be just that, me telling you what I did during these six months. Uh, so with that, I hope that this video will be insightful, maybe even inspirational, or at the very least interesting, and uh, enjoy! So I graduated from college in May of 2016 with a major in math. In college, I had been sort of all over the place. I was going to major in visual studies at one point, then I was going to major in economics, then mathematical economics, and I ended up in math. But the point is that when I graduated from college, I had never written a single line of code in my life. And that was largely due to two reasons. The first one is that I had this really bad misconception that if you hadn't been studying coding since you were a kid or since high school, you couldn't do it in college, you couldn't do computer science in college. It really annoys me thinking back that I had this misconception, but I did have it. The second reason is that I didn't like it. I had seen other people do some coding and I was just kind of turned off by it. And I had dabbled in HTML and CSS for one weekend in college. By the way, I realize that some of you here are going to think, oh, but you said you never wrote a line of code in your life. HTML and CSS, you know, learning the fundamentals of HTML and CSS is not quite the same thing as, you know, learning how to write Python or JavaScript or C++. Uh, I bet that someone in the comments here is going to be like, you said that you never wrote a single line of code in your life, and yet you wrote HTML and CSS. You get the idea. Um, and I just didn't like it. I did not like the the very little amount of, of HTML, CSS I'd done during that one weekend, and so I just had never picked it up. Very quickly after I graduated from college, I realized that a lot of the things that I wanted to do, launch my own business, or work in product management, and venture capital, all these things required coding skills, and I had just discovered what coding boot camps were. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to apply to a coding boot camp and I'm going to learn how to code. And that is really the sort of start of my software engineering journey, or my journey to software engineering. That's when it started. In early June of 2016, a few weeks after I graduated from college, when I started applying to these coding boot camps. I applied to four coding boot camps and I wrote my very first real line of code while applying to them. The way that these coding boot camps work is that they don't want their students to arrive on the first day of in-person classes or online classes having never written a single line of code in their lives. They want them at that point in time to be at a sort of very elementary level of coding knowledge, but they want them to be able to understand basic code. So in order not to sort of discriminate against people like me who have never written a line of code in their lives, or who had never written a line of code in their lives, they give you preparatory material when you apply. You know, you can check off a box that says, I've never written a line of code in my life, and they send you material, very basic material, to teach you the sort of fundamentals of programming. And so I remember I applied to these coding boot camps in you know, early June of 2016, about a few weeks after I graduated from college, and I started learning how to code from these sort of you know, online articles that they sent me. I learned about conditional statements, you know, if else. I learned about uh, loops and uh, you know, very basic recursion. I remember recursion was sort of like you know, advanced topic. Um, and that's when I wrote my very first line of code. Now, to get into these coding boot camps, you have to pass an interview. Or at least back then, when I was applying, I had to pass an interview. And those interviews were very, very similar to the types of coding interviews that you get at Google, if you're applying to Google as a software engineer, except way easier. Basically, you know, they'll ask you a few coding interview questions, very easy ones like, you know, write a function that determines if a string is a palindrome, the types of easy questions on AlgoExpert. And 
if you pass, if you do well on those interviews, you get in. And so, as you can imagine, in the preparatory material that they had given me, where I was sort of learning how to code, they gave a lot of practice problems for their interviews. And I remember I did a lot of them and I got very into them. That was probably what sort of pulled me into coding at the very beginning. I really, like I immediately fell in love with these sort of coding interview questions. I remember loving to do the palindrome question or to do the uh, Caesar cipher encryptor question. That was one that I had was given at the time uh, as a practice problem. And I just found it very enjoyable, very fun. And so during, you know, the first few weeks of June 2016, I found myself doing a lot of these sort of, you know, easy uh, coding interview questions as I was learning the very fundamentals of programming. So then I was accepted to all four of the coding boot camps that I had applied to, and I decided to attend Full Stack Academy in New York City. And their program was gonna be four months. Three months were the sort of immersive, in-person part of the program from September to mid-December. And then there was gonna be one month before the program started in August. That would just be sort of self-directed at home with some you know, tutorials and things that they would send me. And so I remember I spent the month of July 2016 just sort of very excited that I'd gotten into the program and kind of you know going back to playing video games all day. I remember I didn't do any coding during that month. Then the month of August rolled around and I started doing their sort of pre-work online. And during that time, I wasn't doing anything too crazy. I was following what they were doing. It was, you know, just a few hours of coding per day. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was doing anything particularly more than that, uh, in large part because they were sort of warning you, telling you, do what we're giving you, not much more. You'll have plenty of coding to do during the three months of the immersive part of the program. So I sort of just took them by, by their word and did just that. Then the immersive part of the coding boot camp started. It went from September 2016 all the way to December 2016, or mid-December, and those three months and a half were really the highlight of my journey to software engineering. During those three months, I was living and breathing coding, and most of my peers, most of the people in the coding bootcamp with me were doing the same thing or similar things, but I was really, I really treated that as all I'm gonna do during those three months and a half is coding and coding related stuff. Because and it's really important for to, to understand that this was a big, this was sort of a, it wasn't too risky, but it was, it was a big thing to have done this coding boot camp. I say it wasn't that risky because, you know, I had just graduated from college, but it was still a big, big thing. It cost a lot of money, you know, somewhere but somewhere around $17,000, uh, half of which I had paid using all of the money that I had saved up in college. And, you know, my parents weren't thrilled that I was suddenly, you know, doing this huge, like, ran seemingly random career shift uh, immediately after graduating college. And I really told myself, if I'm going to take this seriously, or, or if I'm going to try to actually make something out of this, I better take it seriously. So all I was doing was coding. I was basically spending, I would say, you know, 14 hour days doing coding related stuff. I would spend the first sort of eight hours of the day, uh, you know, that the coding boot camp sort of had structured for you there, obviously doing their classes and doing their projects and all that. But then I would stay at the coding bootcamp campus and I would do other stuff, other coding stuff. I was lucky that I was really good friends with some of the, the students there and we were kind of together, in it together there. Uh, and then I would come home really late. I remember I would come home every, every night at like midnight or 1 a.m. and I would still continue doing a bit of coding. Uh, but the point is, I was really just living and breathing coding. I wanna highlight this next point, which is that during the coding bootcamp, I got very, very hooked into this website called Code Wars. Code Wars is a website that gives you these sort of like coding puzzles and challenges. They're kind of like coding interview questions, but a little bit more like puzzle oriented or math oriented. I would, for instance, recommend Algo Expert if you're preparing for coding interviews, but if you're in, if you like or enjoy these sort of coding challenges, then Code Wars is very fun. And Full Stack Academy, my coding bootcamp, recommended that we do Code Wars 
uh, to warm up in the mornings. And I got so addicted to that website, addicted to doing their problems and their puzzles, probably because I'm just a very like competitive person in general, and I love when systems are like gamified and with rankings and all that. And we had this ranking for our class at the coding boot camp, and I remember I got so into that, me and this one other student in the class, um, that I did almost all of the problems on Code Wars, and I got to the sort of top rank on Code Wars, um, and really here I'm not, I'm not flexing, maybe a little bit, um, it's more that just like I put so much time into that, I remember I was doing it like day in and day out, uh, you know, in the evenings, in the mornings, uh, on the train, I just loved it. But so yeah, here I think I have it on my computer, I can pull it up, uh, you can see like I, I got to this thing, the, the top rank, which is 1Q, and yeah, I was just putting so much time into it. This is this was our, our coding bootcamp class. The reason that I wanted to highlight this was because I really attribute a lot of my success during my journey to, to Google, for instance, and, and to learning software engineering, to having done so much of this Code Wars website. And I think the reason is that it's not that you have to do Code Wars or that you have to do all these like coding puzzles. It's more that I found something that I was really interested in or that, or that I found really fun that was related to coding and I got to practice my coding skills or some coding skills, right, some parts of coding a ton by doing this over and over and over again every day. And so that was one, that's one thing that I really uh, attribute to my success thus far. I also got very into the projects that I was working on and I decided to do something that I think was pretty smart or clever. Um, I tried to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, with my projects. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're working on a project, right? Let's say it's, I don't know, a website and you're making a website about video games or about cooking. Just giving an example, right? You have the coding part of the project, which is like the website, but then you have the other non-coding part of the project, which is video games or cooking. I tried to make that other part, video games or cooking, something related to programming. So for instance, three of the projects that I worked on out of four big projects that I had on my resume were all related, like doubly related to programming. Two of them were visualization tools for algorithms, for pathfinding algorithms and sorting algorithms. And those were really cool because they taught me about, like they really, really taught me about algorithms, about pathfinding and sorting algorithms. It was a great way to not only sort of flex my front end and JavaScript skills, um, and I'll show you the projects in a second, but it was also a great way for me to kind of double down on my algorithms and get a head start on them and uh, learn about these algorithms and how they work inside and out. And then another project that was sort of similar is I wrote a sort of like a compiler or interpreter for a programming language that I that I invented. We called it the Oak programming language. I worked on this with one of my uh, other classmates. And that was another way that to, to kind of like doubly work on programming, right? I wrote this interpreter for a language, but then I also had to sort of like create that language and and uh, try to come up with, you know, learn about how interpreters work and all and so on and so forth. So I think that those projects were were particularly helpful for me just because, you know, as someone who, again, had very little, if not any, coding experience before, I wanted to maximize my my um, exposure to coding and to, to coding-related things. So that's why I did that. So here you can see my pathfinding visualizer project. Basically, you've got, uh, like, multiple nodes that you can put on a grid and you can put sort of walls, you can draw walls, and then you can visualize algorithms like Dijkstra's algorithm or A star. It was really fun, uh, a very visual project. Like if I visualize, let's say Dijkstra's algorithm, you can sort of see like the node trying to find the other node, and then the, the path will get sort of uh, drawn out like this, and then you could sort of like move it. There's lots of cool stuff. You can find this project on my GitHub and you can play around with it, but this was a really cool one because like I said, it taught me like, I breathed Dijkstra's algorithm for, like, two weeks uh, when I was doing this project. And similarly, if you look at my sorting visualizer project, uh, this one, I had to learn, like, really thoroughly how well 
merge sort, quick sort, heat sort worked, bubble sort, of course, but like merge sort, you know, is a great, great way to kind of see, let's see if I press sort, you know, to see it work and to also be able to, um, to, you know, put my, you know, JavaScript and React skills to the test. I think this was in vanilla JavaScript, not React. But um, yeah, because these projects were really cool because they kind of, you know, killed two birds with one stone, so to speak. Then December came along. The coding boot camp was done. I started applying to jobs. I was still wrapping up a couple of projects at that point. For instance, the uh, sorting visualizer, I did that after the coding boot camp in late December 2016. And then in January 2017, I got a rude awakening. I found myself in a pretty humbling experience. Um, I was a bit overconfident that the experience of Code Wars, all the problems I had done on Code Wars, were enough to prepare me for the coding interviews. And I actually failed uh, one of my phone interviews at Lyft, the ride-sharing company. And that was kind of a, a very disappointing experience for me. I remember thinking, like, wow, the problem that I got, um, I think I had, I had gotten the longest palindromic substring. Um, that is that is something that I should have been able to do, but I just hadn't prepared enough. And, and you know, the thing, the problems on Code Wars just weren't geared, geared towards really interview prep. That was right around the time that I scheduled my interviews at Google. By the way, I recently made a video on how I actually landed the coding interviews at Google. If you haven't checked it out already, I would recommend you do. It'll be in the description below. But so when I scheduled those interviews for Google, I had about 10 days until then, uh, or until the interviews, and I really said I will, I will learn my lesson from Lyft, and I will really um, go heads down on coding interview prep, and that is exactly what I did. At the time, all that I had to prepare with were books and the internet. And it really wasn't fun, especially for someone like me who only knew JavaScript, because those books were in Java and C++ only. So having to understand written solutions in a typed language like Java or C++ when I had never learned a typed language was just a nightmare. Uh, of course, today, if you're studying for coding interviews, I would recommend using AlgoExpert, AlgoExpert.io, the website that I co-founded. But one thing that I do want to mention is that during those like 10 days of hardcore coding interview prep that I did, I actually taught myself Python and I did all of that coding interview prep in Python because apart from the Google coding interviews that I was preparing for, I also had Two Sigma interviews. Two Sigma is a hedge fund and uh, a very sort of tech related hedge fund. And uh, their interviews, you had to pick a language between Python, C++, and Java. And I knew I, was gonna, I wasn't going to learn Java or C++ in 10 days, so I decided to do them in Python. And then at Google, I ended up doing my interviews in Python as well, even though I could have done JavaScript there. And uh, it ended up working for me. And then the rest is history. I did well on my coding interviews at Google, which happened in early February 2017. And then I got my hire decision from Google just three days after my interviews. And that's it. If you count the months between the day that I wrote my very first line of code and the time that I got my hire decision, it's uh, June 2016. Then July 2016, I didn't do anything. I sort of took a break and played video games all day, Overwatch. Um, and then August, September, October, November, December, January. So seven months, a little over six months. Six months sounds better in the title anyway. Uh, and that's it. That is how I went from never having written a line of code in my life to landing a job as a software engineer at Google. And now, just a couple years later, I can't imagine not being a software engineer. I can't imagine not coding almost every day. That's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my story. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Let me know if you have a similar story or if you were inspired by my story. I always read your comments. And these videos take a surprising amount of time to film and to edit and to kind of scope out. So I would very much appreciate a smashing of the like button if you enjoyed the video, but it is by no means necessary. I will see you in the next one.